Uh, very good morning to one and all. This is uh, Dr. Nabil Ahmed and today we're going to be uh, looking at a topic on the overview of incentives offered by Singapore during the COVID-19. Certain legends used in the presentation, IRAs represent Inland Revenue and Authority of Singapore, Singapore Dollars, PTR is Property Tax Rebate, SME stands for Small and Medium Enterprises. The COVID-19 pandemic has distorted the economic order of many countries and Singapore is also one of the affected countries being faced with recession and several sectors being affected. The responsiveness of the Singaporean government to the COVID-19 pandemic in the economic stimulus packages, programs and other incentives has been analyzed in this webinar. Crucial measures like deferment of taxes, tax rebates and loan schemes Support to low-income workers and assistance to specific sectors like tourism have been undertaken. Apart from this, financial assistance to Singaporean household and flexibility on fees and loans have been enforced. So let's look into them in detail. The first stimulus, which is called as the Unity Budget 2020 uh, for Singapore dollars 4 billion on February 18, 2020, Singapore government announced 2020 budget named the Unity Budget, which focused on providing short-term support for business and sectors impacted by the COVID-19 outbreak. The government also targets technology, innovation and entrepreneurship as particular areas of growth with the vision to transform Singapore into a global Asia node of technology, enterprise and innovation. The government also provides support in the form of tax rebates and loans for small and medium enterprises. So the unity budget features the stabilization and support packages of 4 billion Singapore dollars to provide necessary short term support to businesses to improve their cash flow position and keep local workers in employment. So employers will receive an 8% cash grant on the gross monthly wages of each local employee for three months, subject to a monthly wage cap of 3,600 per employee. Enhances a wage credit scheme, the government will raise the co-funding level to 15% for 2020 from 10%, as well as a monthly wage ceiling to $5,000. Corporate income tax rebate for the financial year at a rate of 25% and capped at Singapore dollars 15,000 per company. The government will raise the maximum loan quantum from 300,000 to 600,000 and increase the risk share on these loans from a current 50 to 70% level to 80% to support the SMEs. It also has a direct aid to impacted sectors such as the crucial areas of the economy such as tourism, aviation, retail, food services and point-to-point -point transport services have been identified that will require direct aid. Within the tourism sector, a property tax rebate of up to 30% for the year 2020 has been granted along with licensing fee waivers to hotels and travel agents. International crews and regional ferry terminals can receive up to a 15% property tax rebate with the integrated resorts will receive up to a 10% rebate. Measures to aid the aviation sector took the form of the Aviation Sector Assistance Package co-funded by the government, the Civil Aviation Authority of Singapore, which aims to help defray business costs and protect jobs. The NEA, the National Environment Agency, will provide a full month's rental waiver to stallholders in NEA-managed hawker centres and half a month rental waiver to its commercial tenants. From the Union Budget's Transformation and Growth Package, <coughs> to enable Singapore to grow and transform its economy, the government has prepared Singapore dollars $8.3 billion in funding over the next three years. The government will focus on three main areas. The first one, the government aims to develop an expanded network of economic linkages through new fair free trade agreements and double tax agreements with international partners, deepening enterprise capabilities by adopting digitalization, new innovation, and assessing new markets overseas. And third one is developing local human resources through the Skill Future program. This program will assist individuals in gaining new skills, enhance the role of businesses in developing their staff and support mid-carried workers to help them stay employed. The second stimulus package, which is called as a resilience budget for 48.4 billion Singapore dollars was passed in March 26, 2020. The Singaporean government launched a second stimulus package to counter the effect of the economic fallout of the COVID-19 pandemic. The budget aims to support the local business through the deferment of taxes, tax rebates and loan schemes, as well as supporting low-income workers and self-employed persons through a new training program and cash handouts. The resilience budget features mainly to support local businesses 
and it has the main features for enterprise financing scheme, a trade loan for a maximum quantum of $10 million, where governments risk share up to 80%, enhancement of loan insurance scheme, where subsidies to businesses from loan insurance premium raised from 50 to 80%, enhancement of temporary bridging loan program, expanded from the tourism sector for all enterprises, maximum support raised to $5 million from a million, and loan quantum for SMEs have further been increased to 1 million. So there is an additional 20 billion in loan capital available. For the impacted sectors, the government will introduce a 350 million aviation support package. For every local aviation worker and employment, government will pay 75% of the wage offset. The tourism industry will benefit from the job support scheme, which is open for licensed hotel travel agencies. And this is also a 90 million additional funding to this industry. Firms in the FNB industry will also be eligible for the job support scheme. For this, the government will provide a 50% wage offset for the first 4,600 monthly wages. And NEA and Hawker Centre will have a three months rental waiver compared to the one that you've seen in March 2020. The government will raise the percentage of co-funding of wages from 8 to 25%. The monthly wage ceiling allowance will be raised from 3,600 to 4,600. So earlier it was 8% and now the government will fund 25%. Lower income Singaporean workers will receive 3,000 one-off cash payment. Self-employed will be provided with $1,000 per month for the next nine months. The government will provide subsidies, which includes covering up to 90% of the fees for any self-employed person looking to engage in reskilling or training programs. The government will freeze all government fees and charges for one year, starting from April 1, 2020 to 31st of March 2021. And loan prepayment and interest charges for student loans will be suspended for one year. And late payment on mortgage arrears are to be suspended for three months. And a boost to the digital economy, the launch of Go Business Licensing Portal, a pro-enterprise digitalization effort to enable a simple and a faster and better process for businesses to apply for license, permits and certificate for the government was launched. This is jointly developed by the MTI and the Smart Nation and Digital Government Office and the Government Tech Office in Singapore. The digital license bonus aims to uplift the digital capabilities of a broad base of enterprises. A bonus of 300 Singapore dollars per month over five months will be given to stallholders and hawker centers, pet markets, coffee shops, and industrial canteens who adopt the e-payment solution. Additional monetary assistance up to 10,000 Singapore dollars to help businesses in food services and retail sectors digitalize with e-invoicing and e-commerce solution. As an enterprise Singapore, this is a government agency championing enterprise development. Below are some of the financial assistance. First is a productivity solution grant, PSG, provided to companies who want to enhance business by adoption of technology with pre-qualified IT solutions and equipment to enhance productivity. Second one is market readiness assistance grant provided to SME to give an industrial boost to the market readiness. Third is the Enterprise Development Grant, assisting companies that are undertaking deeper transformation in business upgrading and international co-innovation programs for companies to internationalize by tapping into funding programs for cross-border collaboration projects on technological development and co-innovation. From tax development's point of view in response to COVID-19, companies and self-employed persons will enjoy automatic deferment of income tax payment for three months between April to June 2020, which has already been done and implemented. Employees with income tax payments due in March to July 2020 may apply to defer their income tax payments for three months. An automatic extension of deadlines for tax filing for individuals and businesses. The air passages provided by employees to evacuate their overseas-based employees and the subsequent flights of sending them back to the overseas work location shall not be taxable to the employee. The Inland Revenue Authority of Singapore will allow certain expenditure relating to working from home, example, the utility expenses as deduction against the employment income. 100% PTR for qualifying commercial properties such as hotels, service apartments, tourist attraction, and 60% for integrated resorts, 30% for all other non-residential properties such as industrial properties and offices. This way, the government has continuously kept uh, providing uh, assistance to the individuals as well as to the corporates who's sailing through this difficult time in the pandemic situation. Thank you for viewing this video, and I look forward to meeting you all in yet another interesting presentation in the coming weeks. Thank you. Have a nice day and stay safe.